All right, here in the third part of the study, we're going to talk about what God can do for you spiritually to keep, to give you rights of privacy. In other words, to keep you private. Um, because as you know, the, the whole thing of being anonymous, having privacy, it's, there's a lot of issues there. We've covered a lot of these things. Um, internet and anonymity is tough, if not impossible. Um, I mean, you can be somewhat anonymous, you can have some privacy, but you know what I'm saying. If you saw the first part of this study, uh, personal privacy, again, there's issues there, whatever else. But is there a spiritual level of privacy that God can give you to protect you? And the answer to that is definitely yes. Okay, it is available to his children. If you're an atheist and you reject the Bible, then no, it's not available to you. But uh, let's look here. I'm going to go through a bunch of scriptures. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 17 through 21. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Okay, as a Christian, you should be honest. You shouldn't be lying to people and whatever else. Um, that doesn't mean you just blab every personal detail, though. All right, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Try to be peaceful with people and things. Dearly, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto, unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. He'll take care of your battles, in other words. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. All right. You're doing right. You're doing good. You're putting out good videos and tracting and whatever else. Um, you go to a store and you're putting out gospel tracts and they come along and say, what are you doing? Say, oh, here you go. This is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem with that? I had a guy call me from the military years ago. And he said, I got a tract, you know, from you and whatever. And, and it was unsolicited and everything else. Kind of trying to make it some kind of terrorist thing that I sent him a gospel tract. Well, I, di I didn't send it. Somebody did. And I said, well, I didn't send it. Well, you know, uh, yes, but it's, you know, it came and, and there was no return address and whatever else. And I found your, you know, I mean, he found, again, see, I didn't have, we were staying with relatives actually at that point in time. I didn't have any phone number attached to the thing and whatever else, but he used his military connections mm -hmm. to find where we were and the phone number and the whole deal and I'm there and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. See, um, he tracked me down through his system. And I basically just said to the guy, oh, what was this thing that was sent to you? Oh, it's some kind of a thing with a picture of a guy in the military in the front, you know, and I said, you mean a gospel tract? Yes, I guess that's what it'd be called. I said, okay, what did it say? And he, well, something about, you know, Bible verses and whatever. And I said, and you're afraid of that, sir? I said, what was it that offended you exactly? Well, okay, it just don't, don't let it happen again. Click. <laughs> you know? I was trying to be good. You see? You're going to try to threaten me and whatever with your little goony connections and things and try to scare me. I'm going to overcome your evil with good. Hey, mil Mr. Military Man. Hey, NSA agent. Hey, FBI agent. Hey, CIA agent. Are you ready to meet God? I can tell you how to be saved. Mm -hmm. You see? And all of a sudden, the conversation ends. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk to you anymore or threaten you anymore. Uh, they kind of lose interest real quickly in that. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Go next to 1 Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. This is a true saying, if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know how to, to rule his own house, how for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Now, 
if you do all those things um, and you're following those things as a man that's in ministry, an elder, another name for bishop, um, what are lost people going to think of you? Are they going to respect you? Yeah. He said, well, oh, no, I don't believe. Keep reading. Verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Without the church, in other words. They're not saved. You mean to tell me an elder should have a good report of lost people that yes. know him? Yeah. Live peaceably with all men. Do good to them that persecute you. You see? Lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. You see? You can have things that are private that you say, hey, I don't, I don't want, you know, you don't have a right to know these things mm -hmm. about me. But let me tell you about Jesus Christ. Oh, you need, your, your vehicle broke down along the side of the road there? Let me help you fix a tire. And while I'm at it, if the conversation comes up, if the Holy Spirit's there and, and brings that, you know, opens up a door of opportunity to witness, witness for Jesus Christ. You see? People will leave you alone. Mm-hmm. Right? You see, don't try to demand privacy from the lost world. You need to, you know, respect my privacy and whatever else. Witness for Jesus Christ and they will, they will give you privacy. <laughs> they want to stay away from you. Mm -hmm. But they'll have, you'll have a good report. They'll say, oh, the, the people, they're all up there, they're weird. No, they'll say, uh, well, they might have some weird beliefs and whatever, but they're, they're good people. They're nice people, you know do anything for you kind of a thing. You don't hear them cussing. You don't hear them, you know, whatever. I can't tell you, again, how many times we've gone to a store and whatever else and, and all of a sudden language gets cleaned up, you know, mm -hmm. because of the way my wife dresses. She looks at, like a lady instead of a, you know, woman in pants or something, uh, man, woman. But, um, you know, I've heard it. I've heard people using profanity and all of a sudden she walks by and zip, language cleans up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen that thing. Having a good report of them that are without, you see. And she's gotten into conversations with women too. She'll hear them talking about, I'm having these health issues or whatever else. And she'll go over and try to help them. She'll go up to the people and witness to them and things and say, hey, you know what, that et cetera is not really going to help you any. Can I show you some things or can I tell you what to do? You know, And she's studying to do that more. Okay? Well, again, we're not hermits. That's another one of the lies that's told about us. So we're just hermits and we're just... These weird people, when you try to be anonymous, no, we're not. Okay, we try to help people. We study to, to, to be able to, you know, be there to help people in the local area. We don't hide behind a church building. Amen. Okay. All the Baptists out there, have, oh, you got to go to your local church. Why? So you can get in with your little clique of friends there. Sure. And, uh, you know, you give the special people the pulpit mention. And then you, you know, go over and eat at each other's house after Sunday. Oh, I know how it is. You know, I know how it is. Yeah. That's not cultic. No. But doing what we do is cultic somehow. Right. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Verses 12 through 14. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the rest durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. I don't want to join, you know, that Christian group, that this Bible, King James Bible believing thing, but you know what? They're good people. Boy, they sure know some things. Again, one of the older women that my wife had a chance to witness to. She said she called her smart girl. <laughs> you know, she was an old woman on all kinds of medication, just break your heart. I mean, the doctors are trying to kill her. Mm -hmm. And she literally said that. She said, so they're basically trying to kill me. And my wife said, yeah, they are. She was discussing this stuff with her, and she, she gave her a hug when we were leaving. She said, it's good talking to you. She said, boy, smart girl. She said, you just, you know so much. She magnifies my wife. Doesn't mean that she tried to say, hey, I'm going to just dress this like you and I tell me about Jesus and whatever else. The Lord didn't give us that opportunity. And she still witnesses to this woman too, by the way. So, you know, it's ongoing. Um, see? She needs to get her health back in order for her to have a clear mind and say, mm -hmm. 
I need I to mean, change some things. We're not just talking about one or two, you know, prescription drugs here. We're talking multiple prescription drugs. This poor woman. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're to be a light in this dark world. That's what we're supposed to do. Um, and what does it lead to? When people magnify you for doing good works among the people. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Yeah. Without church buildings. Without inviting people to local churches and all that other stuff. Hmm. I hmm. wonder how they could grow the, the ministry that way. I just don't know. Not possible. Never. You say, well, then I should just be a nice, you know, kind of a friendly, always smiling, happy, you know, kind of a person. That's how you win friends and influence people. You know, is that is that what it is? Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5 says, Open rebuke is better than secret love. Mm -hmm. God loves you. Jesus loves you. We all love you. The church loves you. The church, the loving church with a loving heart. And the, Open rebuke. Uh, excuse me. Um, that alcohol that you're getting there, that's, that's bad for you. You really don't want that. You, those cigarettes, emphysema, lung cancer, hello, think about that. Sugar added in them to make them more toxic and addictive. Yep. Um, hey, you know what? Those pharmaceutical pills, uh, you don't, are you a heroin junkie? Well, me? No, I'm not a heroin junkie, but you're taking opioids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's chemically very, chemically very similar to heroin. Mm -hmm. Very similar. So a lot of these uh, painkillers and things that are being prescribed to people, they're heroin junkies. I mean, we see it all the time. It's getting worse and worse. And we live in the middle of nowhere. I can't imagine people living in city areas. But, I mean, you see people and they're swerving into other lanes and they're speeding up and slowing down and they're uh, acting all different. And I'm thinking, I bet that person's on pharmaceutical pills, you know. But I shouldn't say that because that wouldn't be loving. I should just have secret love for that person and just... I'm praying for you. I don't want to rebuke you. I don't want to judge you. You're a good person. Yeah. Open rebuke mm -hmm. is better than secret love. Tell people the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay? If they're open to the truth, they're going to they're gonna take it and they're going to say, thank you. I wish you know somebody else had told me this. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 19 through 20. And again, you know, you're openly rebuking people. Do you really think that they're going to be wanting to, to delve into your private business? Oh, I, I, is it true that you're so and so? so have you been born again? Mm -hmm. You see? You need to get right. You know what? That gossip is wrong. That's a sin. Mm -hmm. oh, why would you say that to such a nice older woman? She's Okay, she gossips a little bit, but she's just such a nice... Secret love versus open rebuke. See what I mean? Proverbs chapter 31, verses 19 through 20. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Psalm. Mm -hmm. Psalm. I'm thinking, why don't Proverbs 31? Wrong chapter. Yeah. Wrong book of the Bible there. Psalm 31, verses 19 through 20. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. You want privacy, Christian? You don't want people to just track you and whatever else and whatever? Okay. Great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. Do you fear God? You'll rebuke people openly if you do, because you don't fear people. You fear God, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Do you trust God? Do you trust him? Do you believe his word? Well, guess what? God will keep certain details of your life secret. God will give you privacy. In ways that no man-made system on earth can do. Mm-hmm. Show you some more scriptures on this. Proverbs. Oh, I keep saying Proverbs. Psalm. <laughs> okay. Psalm 64. Verses 13 through 14. Um, I, I, I have yet to attain papal infallibility. I try. I try. 
But I mean, just my, my hopes of being Pope someday are just dashed to pieces. I've, it, Psalm 64, verses 1 through 10. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Is Big Brother something to be feared? Yeah. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Hmm. From the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Hello. <laughs> who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Hi, Rational Wiki. <laughs> my, my best friends on the internet there, you know. Verse 4. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Libel, slander, you know, some of the stuff that's been brought out, you know, people say about me. They encourage themselves in an evil manner, matter, they commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? Mm -hmm. we're, we're anonymous here at Rational Wiki. We're anonymous. You know, they can't tell that we're, you know, libel and slander that we could actually be sued in court for. But who knows? Because we can do it secretly with, you know, anonymous names and nobody will know. Mm -hmm. God knows. Yes. God knows who you people are that lie about me, who you people are that threaten us. God knows who you are. Uh, verse 6, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. <laughs> you know, oh, the Bible's archaic, right? You know, Google searches, mm -hmm. you know, looking for pass or not passwords, but uh, um, keywords. keywords and things. Yeah, exactly. Algorithms. Yep. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. I have seen that with some of my enemies. All of a sudden, they're just gone. They just disappear. Then you find out they have cancer or they have some other type of a thing. They're losing their mind or whatever. I've seen it quite a few times. So, shall, so they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider of His doing. People will magnify you and things like that because of the Lord working through you. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in Him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. You want an answer to this question up here, what is a Christian's right to privacy? Psalm 64, right there. I would say the greatest psalm in the entire Bible on the issue of privacy. I mean, compare that to the Internet and the Big Brother system and all that other stuff. Wow. Wow. But what's the secret? How do you get Psalm 64 in your life? Are you born again? Are you saved? Do you fear God? Do you love His truth? That's the only way that you get His protection. You don't want that? Well, then go with your little secure, you know, VPNs and your little, you know, special little uh, spyware stuff and, you know, secure, you know, <laughs> Cryptology stuff and mine, so to speak, in cryptology. Yeah. Go with that stuff. Yeah. Reject the Lord as, a, as an atheist because you're so intelligent. Yes. And uh, just go on, on ahead and... Yeah. Psalm 91. Verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Like the coronavirus, you hear this old, all this stuff and whatever. Oh, what's going to happen? I don't worry about it. The Lord's going to protect us. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, compared to what we just read, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Hmm, pretty good promise there. <clears throat> Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. 
Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I mean, this is written to David back in the early Old Testament, saved by faith and works back there. But think of how much greater these promises are for you today as a Christian. <clears throat> Verse 10, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will deliver, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I can't tell you how many times I've almost had an accident and the Lord just stops it. And I just think, wow, if this had only been a second later, if I would only have done whatever, <clears throat> I really could have been hurt there. I've seen that thing so many times, <laughs> so many times. You fear the Lord. You walk in righteousness. You serve Him. You trust His Word. He'll protect you. He'll give you that privacy. You see? <clears throat> now let's look at the spirits from the Lord. This is another very interesting thing. Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah chapter 11, beginning in verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of the knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Those spirits are available to you as a Christian. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Okay? You're one flesh with Jesus Christ. Bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. You're connected to him. Are you walking with the Lord as a Christian? Hmm. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 18. Let's read that. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Hmm. Do you fear Big Brother and all this other stuff? Well, it's scary stuff what they can do and whatever else, but you know what? Don't worry about it if you're right with God. <clears throat> but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Um, just because you fear the Lord and whatever else doesn't mean you're going to have a smooth ride. Okay, I'm not saying that you should have privacy and whatever else so that you can just be kind of Superman Christian where you can kind of keep yourself hidden and at the right time you come out and, you know, whatever. No, no, you know, you're Clark Kent when you go to work and then you're Superman when you go to church. <laughs> Uh, no, that doesn't work. All right? You're supposed to be living as a Christian all the time. Um, and you're going to suffer for that. But God will protect you. He won't suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. You see, that's the difference there. You're living right and doing things right. You can claim Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Let's read that. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God... There's a condition there, in other words. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. You are doing the will of God in your life. Everything's going to work together for good. Remember that. Next, we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second. 
2 Timothy chapter 1, um, verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by, putting, by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. You do good works after you get saved, but it's the Lord that's telling you to do those things. Okay? Following the golden rule and volunteering at the local soup kitchen and homeless shelter and whatever else, if the Lord's not telling you to do that stuff, then that isn't going to mean anything. Okay? Um, there are a lot of Baptist-type women out there that will wear modest, quote-unquote, modest dresses, but they're not really doing it because the Lord is instructing them. They're just doing it because that's what we do at church, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that's not, not the right motivation. Not at all. Um, verse 10, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Again, you see this thing here. Paul has... Um, you know, private things that he's doing and things like that. And there are some Christians that are there and they're lining up with Paul and they're helping him. And then there are false converts that are going after him and trying to, to tear him down. What is that? Public ministry. Okay. You have a right to privacy. But if the Lord tells you to do something and talk to somebody, open rebuke is better than secret love. Speak to people. Talk to people about the Lord. All right? If they're wicked, if they're trying to pry into your business and whatever else, they will leave you alone. Believe me. Okay? If there's a door that the Holy Spirit will open there, you might get somebody saved. But to try and do it by your own works, to try and have your privacy by your own um, intelligence and your own computer algorithms and all your other stuff to try and make yourself secure and I'm going to hide out in the middle of nowhere and whatever else, it isn't going to happen. The Lord needs to be the one that protects you. And you're going to get some persecution. You will, but the Lord will protect you. The Lord will say, okay, no, you're not going to touch him. No, this and that, whatever. Please remember that. Um, Psalm 14. A couple more places to go to here. Psalm 14, went past it up, we'll get there, Psalm 14, verses 4 through 5, have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? Look out for people who don't want to call upon the Lord to be saved. Mm -hmm. Got to worry about that. There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Hmm. Talking about the workers of iniquity who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. People trying to persecute Christians. But what? What's going on there? There were they in great fear, for God is in the generation of the righteous. Why do politicians... Try to pretend that they're Christians if we have no spiritual power. Hmm. 
Donald Trump, this wicked fornicating Jesuit, and he stands up there and he says, you know, he holds up a King James Bible. Why is he doing that? There's a fear there of godly people. Why is America not fallen yet? Well, you see, because of the... <laughs> there's still Bible-believing Christians here. God still has a purpose to keep this country going. Get some people saved yet. That's what I believe. Psalm 53. Psalm 53, verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Corrupt are they, and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Every one of them has gone back. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread? They have not called upon God. Referencing back to Psalm 14. There were they in great fear, where no fear was, for God hath scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God hath despised them. Very interesting. Again, atheistic people that try to come after you and whatever else and make records of you and, and dox you and you know put your personal documents out there if you don't know what that means and persecute you, God's got it in for them. He's going to take care of them. Don't worry about it. Exodus chapter 12. I'll show you another interesting thing here. What the Lord can do for you. Exodus chapter 12. In verse 36, And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent, them, they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Okay? The Lord supernaturally uh, gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Um, I have seen that thing. There have been times we have gone places and the people are very wicked and yet they'll, they'll just, oh, hello, and they'll, they'll talk and they'll be really nice to us and whatever else. We have seen many, many times where the Lord has done that. You know, um, it's an interesting thing. The Holy Spirit of God controls everybody. Remember that. God gives them free will. You know, they're out there doing wicked things, whatever, but the Holy Spirit can come in and say, okay, sit, rover, <laughs> speak, Roll over, stand up, beg. God is in control. Don't forget that. Okay? You say, well, what about the NSA and the CIA and black, black, you know, covert op? And God knows everything that they're doing. He controls all of that stuff. They can't do one thing without his permission. So, Including well, the geoengineering uh, nuts. Yeah, and whatever else you want to say. There's a whole lot of other stuff we could get into, the evil that's out there. But just going to end with a really interesting story, one of my favorites in the Bible, 2 Kings chapter 6, story about Elisha. <clears throat> I love this story. 2 Kings chapter 6, just how the Lord can control things and take over things. Oh, brother, their big brother could be taken over here and and we could go to FEMA camps and be tortured and, you know, necessary rendition. It's not torture anymore, it's rendition. Whatever. Um, you know, oh, they could do this and they get, they're, they're tracking us. They know who we are and whatever else. Look at this story. 2 Kings chapter 6, beginning in verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. So, Elisha is getting intel from the Lord. Okay? There wasn't any kind of surveillance there as far as electronic surveillance or some inner mole or whatever that was working and feeding Elisha information. A saved man back then is getting intel from the Lord. Look at the kings of Syria's reaction. Verse 11, Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, 
Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Which one of you is betraying this? All, are you, all of you are here with top-level secret security clearances, and this is getting out somehow. Somebody's talking. Somebody's here, you know. <laughs> That's what he's doing. Verse 12, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. What did we read earlier in Ecclesiastes? Be careful what you say in your bedchamber. Why? A bird of the air will carry, will carry the matter. And that with, with, which hath wings will tell of the matter. You know? Hmm. The Lord can spy on anything. And here's an example of actually the reverse of what most people think of, of big brother. And, you know, it's not big brother, it's big father. <laughs> and he's telling Elisha, here's where the king of Syria is going to go. Let the king of Israel know. Very interesting. Verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is. Oh, they're going to do military intelligence on us? Let's reverse it on them. That I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Oh, our, our intelligence sources. My lord, the king. You know, um, we, we're here. We found he's in Dothan. Our secret security clearance guys, our black ops soldiers, they found that Elisha's in Dothan. Oh, we got him now. <laughs> Verse 14, Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. Sneaking in there, we're going we're gonna to get him, SWAT team him. And when the servant of the man of God was risen earlier and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said, uh, said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we go? Uh, they're tracking us. Or how shall we do? Excuse me. Verse 16, And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Two men, Elisha and his servant. Huge big army, compassing about. There's more of us than there are them. And his servant's going, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about this, Elisha. Verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Hmm. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. So here comes the soldiers there, the military. Forward, march! And they're coming down and let's get Elisha. We're going to get this stinking spy. We're, we got him now. He's surrounded. He can't get away. Elisha says, Smite them with blindness, Lord. They keep marching down. Look what happens. Verse 19, And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way. He goes out to meet them. He walks right out to them. This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me. <laughs> I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. <laughs> Gotta love that. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. <laughs> and he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the band, bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. What an interesting story. Hey, the military's coming for you. Okay. Lord, give me a chance to witness to him. Oh, you're here for uh, Brian Denlinger? Oh, he went this way. Come on, I'll show you. <laughs> Walk over. He went that way. <laughs> oh, before you go, let me just give you some food and things and some provision here. You see what I'm saying? Oh, the, the, what are we going to do? It's Big Brother. They're, they're taking our personal information and they're doing... Witness. 
Witness for Jesus Christ. Be more bold. Mm -hmm. They're making records. Good for them. Give them something interesting to read. Mm -hmm. Okay? Should you be private? Yes, you should. There are certainly cases in the Bible when you should be private. If they start coming out and saying that we're going to put Christians in jail and it's illegal and whatever else, you might have to do some things in private. Certainly. But the whole matter is, if it's not the Lord's timing for you to be taken and put into prison or whatever else, it's not going to happen. The Lord can take it, a situation, and He can give you an Elisha moment, we'll say. Um, he can hide you from these people. Do the work of the Lord. Okay, That's the best way to, to maintain your privacy. Common sense, folks. Um, do certain things, certainly, that we mentioned in the other study. I'm not going to go back through those. You can go back and watch them. Um, do those things. But witness for Jesus Christ. That's the best way to stay private. Make them not want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have no fear about the mainstream media ever coming after me. None. I was actually told that. Uh, Eric John Phelps actually told me that the one time. Major issues with Eric John Phelps. But the point is, he said they'll never talk to you. Why? Because things that the mainstream media tries to cover up, I could dispel some of that stuff within seconds of them talking to me. You know? And I'll give you an example of uh, a couple of my run-ins with the media. When I was at the University of Iowa in uh, 2001, a little bit into 2002, I was walking along around campus one day and I had no choice. I had to go through this little area where they were there's some news report on something and um, I had to go through the area when they were no longer talking you know and and of all things I get questioned some kind of question at the time and I answered and I realize now that the Lord gave me exactly what to say because they stopped asking me questions and they let me go my way mm -hmm. and um, after <clears throat> the Lord saved me about a about a month after the Lord saved me, um, I went, I made the mistake of going to the ridiculous um, Republican Party dinner or something that was in Des Moines, Iowa, and just to see all the different speakers speak. And I ended up being the first attendee of the event, and a couple of news reporters tried to talk to me after the event, or, and, and the first one said, I said, uh, who are you? I'm so-and-so from NBC or whatever. So I said, no, stay away from me. Not talking to you. And then a local news reporter from Des Moines um, tried to talk to me. And I, you know, talked about some things from the Bible. I don't, I didn't know much scripture at the time. But I did my best to get the reporter off my back. And somehow the stuff that I told them with the Lord's help to, you know, put them in contact with in contact with God at the time that never made it in their little excerpt in their news report from they the forgot event. yes they just they somehow yes. conveniently that's forgot. all there was because the news media talks about God in the Bible all the time yes so but <clears throat> news media of any level is bi very very biased yeah so but you know the whole point is just bring up the Lord in these things mm -hmm. okay do your best with privacy Certainly. Don't fall into the trap of trying to remain anonymous, completely, wholly, totally. But don't just be a blabbermouth either and just tell everybody your business and whatever else. Personal things. Mm -hmm. um, if, you're, if you want to be a blabbermouth, if you like to talk, talk about Jesus. Okay? So, we could keep going on and on about this study, but uh, that's going to be it. And uh, very good question. This is something we've talked a lot about over the years, my wife and I. And... and um, so, uh, just hope it's been a blessing to you. Hope it's been a challenge to you. If you're spreading some things on the internet that you're kind of getting convicted, maybe I shouldn't be talking about that. If you're doing some online banking or whatever else, you're sharing a little bit too much information, I would recommend away from that. Um, what you should be open about is Jesus and open rebuke. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't just say, well, I love people and I keep my mouth shut and I don't want to judge people. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Okay? You do that, you fear God, you hold up His Word as the ultimate source of truth, 
and the Lord will protect you. He will keep you secret. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.